The producers and distributors of Tech AV Technical Training Aids welcome you to this training program on the subject of basic hydraulic systems maintenance. This is the basic overview program in which you will learn about basic principles of fluid power transmission, major components of typical hydraulic systems, how a typical system operates, and principles of oil filtration. Hydraulic machinery is used in a wide variety of applications, such as in materials handling equipment, production presses, earth moving equipment, and a host of other machinery. The principles upon which hydraulic equipment operate and the procedures involved in maintenance will be similar for all systems. Let us begin as we first take a look at the fundamentals of fluid power and hydraulic systems. Fluid power is the term used to describe the transmission of energy or work through a fluid medium instead of through mechanical drives. This fact can be demonstrated using simple medical syringes, plastic tubing and some colored water. With the two syringes connected via the tubing, the basic principle of hydraulic action can be demonstrated. As you can see, when one of the plungers is forced down, the opposite plunger moves. The science of this phenomenon is that any liquid, when contained in a confined space, such as a closed pipe or a cylinder, will behave like a solid when a force is applied. This happens because liquids cannot be compressed. There is absolutely no magic involved here. We are simply witnessing a physical or scientific fact. The liquid being displaced out of one syringe, owing to the force acting on the plunger, has only one place to go, or flow, and that is through the tube and into the opposite syringe. However, this flow of liquid is restricted by the plunger in the opposite syringe. As a result, pressure builds up in the liquid, acting equally upon all the surfaces in the liquid line, including the surface of the second plunger. The pressure acting on the plunger results in the movement. If there were no restriction to the flow, that is, if there were no plunger in the second syringe, then liquid would simply flow out of the syringe. A simple demonstration to help you understand this can be shown with a garden hose. When you turn on the tap, water will flow unrestrictedly out of the hose. However, if you partially block the outlet with a thumb or a finger, you will be causing a restriction to the flow, and the water will spray with considerable force. To summarize, hydraulic systems operate because power or energy can be transmitted through a liquid when it is caused to flow, and that pressure or force is created when there is a restriction to flow. Hydraulic systems, based upon the principles that we have just discussed, are capable of producing extremely powerful forces. Bearing these points in mind, let us take a look at the makeup of a typical hydraulic system. Any hydraulic system will comprise three main sections, namely a power pack that is responsible for the oil flow through a system, actuators which convert the oil flow into pressure and work, and control devices that take care of such things as pressure regulation and flow direction. A power pack usually comprises a reservoir or tank that contains the oil for the system and the hydraulic pump and its drive motor. The purpose of a pump is to provide the required flow of oil within a system. Oil is drawn to the pump from the tank through a suction line. The pump then discharges the oil through its outlet into the pressure line. As we learned earlier, flow on its own does not result in pressure until that flow meets a restriction. 
the major restriction to flow in a system is an actuator or the working device. Actuators may be in the form of cylinders or hydraulic motors. Cylinders are referred to as linear actuators because their working action is in a straight line or linear. Hydraulic motors are classified as rotary actuators because their working action is a turning or rotary action. Finally, we have the control devices. These are used primarily for controlling direction of flow and system pressure. Directional control is necessary to route oil flow to and from the actuators. Directional control valves may be operated manually or automatically. Pressure controls are named according to their main function. In virtually any system, there will be a pressure relief valve. The purpose of a relief valve is to limit pressure buildup within a system to a preset maximum, thus preventing an overload. The relief valve, situated somewhere in the pump output line, diverts some or all of the pump's output flow into the tank when the set pressure has been reached. To summarize, a typical system comprises the power pack, pressure and flow control devices, and actuators. We will return after the break to look at typical hydraulic systems. <laughs>